My name is Paula Fan. Am I on? Yes, I'm on. And I play the piano. Etc. Now, what is that? Does anyone know? Just shout it out. Moonlight sonata. Moonlight sonata. But would it surprise you to know that Beethoven called it no such thing? It would be news to him to hear you call it the Moonlight Sonata. And this little name came from a poet by the name of Ludwig uh, Rellstab, who about five years after Beethoven died said, you know, this first movement sounds like moonlight over a lake. And I think it was Lake Lucerne. And uh, so like it or not, and who knows whether Beethoven would have liked it or not, it's been called the moonlight ever since in spite of some pretty vociferous voices of objection over the centuries. I think one critic said, how absurd. But in any case, in this day and age, many listeners describe pieces of music, even the abstract or pure music that has no lyrics or titles, they call it songs. And that's because much of what we listen to in the popular domain has words associated with it. A lot of classical music nowadays is the same. It has specific titles to tell you what it's about or what the composer had in mind when he composed it, he or she had composed it, or was inspired by. Uh, we at the Tucson Symphony are playing a piece called Conversations with Nijinsky. Now, when MTV came around, they added the, added, uh, the, the dimension of the visual. And so since then, people have come to expect each sense to be simultaneously engaged. But you know, this is nothing new, because people chased rainbows to Chopin's music for years. What it is is that someone added words, I've always been chasing rainbows, to an existing piece of music, if you're pure music. And if you're old enough, you might remember that. But Disney's Fantasia populated Ponchielli, with ostriches and hippos in tutus and toe shoes. And that's sort of fair enough, because of course, Ponchielli wrote ballet music. And then of course, who can forget Elmer Fudd and kill the wabbit, kill the wabbit, kill the wabbit. You know, and so Brunhilde and her Valkyries have been supplanted by Elmer and Bugs forever. Too bad, Mr. Wagner. Now, I was recently treated to a wonderful quote from the playwright Howard Barker, who wrote in The Guardian in 1986, it is not to insult an audience to offer it ambiguity. And I am here to argue in favor of increasing doses of this invaluable commodity, ambiguity. Now, this word is largely pejorative. And you know, as a teacher, how often have I said or written the damning words? Be more specific. And I'm sure all of you have had reactions like that. And so, you know, administrators have sort of gotten the idea. And now, 
uh, they require us teachers to have syllabi. And even better than that, the students, I've had students ask me very specifically exactly what they need to know to pass their exams. <laughs> I, I kid you not. However, I'm here to try with you a little experiment. Because what we're going to do this afternoon is to remove the specific in pursuit of ambiguity. So I'm going to ask you to start by closing your eyes and just listening to what I'm about to perform. And you know, there's not much to watch when I play anyway. You know, I'm not Elton John. I'm not nothing, you know, interesting to watch. So you can do this. So what we have left now is the marriage of words and music. And this can be a wonderful thing. I mean, I love songs. It's, it's you know, my meat and potatoes. And so I'm going to play to you music by Debussy, the French composer, which was inspired by words by the surrealist French poet Paul Verlaine, and which I'm actually going to read to you in translation. And what you will hear is the complementary aspect of both poetry and music, complementary in the true sense of the word. Each completes the others. It's not, you're a very nice poem, thank you. OK. so. Just see what you think. See what you hear. In the old park, solitary and icy, Two forms have just passed by. Their eyes are dead and their lips are slack. And one can barely hear the words. In the old park, solitary and icy, two specters are evoking the past. Do you remember our old ecstasy? Why would you want to remember that? Does your heart beat at the sound of my name? Do you see my soul in your dreams? No. when we joined our lips together. It's possible. How beautiful the sky was. And how high were our hopes. is gone, defeated into the black sky. And so they walk together along an avenue strewn with oats, and only the night has heard their words.
Now, it's sort of up to you to uh, guess the gender of the ghosts. You know, we'll, we'll see. You know, that's, uh, DBC leaves us no clue whatsoever. But this piece of music, now that it is associated with words, has become finite in a sense. It is marked forever as a ghost story, it's largely in the same way that uh, to many of us, the Sorcerer's Apprentice has the face of Mickey Mouse for the rest of time. So now let's take away the words. As I used to say in school shows for the Tucson Symphony, now kids, close your eyes, listen, and then I want some of you to describe for me after you hear this piece, your very own mind movie. Remember, there are no wrong answers. Okay, any ideas? Hands? Come on. What did you hear? Way in back, what did you hear? I heard a bustling big city. Okay. Somebody walked down to the, um, to the underground, the, the, uh, the metro or whatever, and they started, their, they, their imagination started drifting as the change of scene, and they went out into maybe their country house. Okay, that's the middle section, right? The slow section? Okay. Okay, anybody else? Another mind movie? Come on, don't be shy. We get old and we get shy. What a strange thing. Yes? Well, I saw a lot of people playing in the snow, uh, throwing snowballs and running around and just having a wonderful time. And then maybe skating in the middle, but I wasn't sure about that. Okay. Okay, anybody else? Anyone younger? <laughs> yeah. Train, yeah. And there's like a damsel in distress tied on that train. Back. Oh yeah, that's the middle section when she yeah, says, "Save me, save me, save me, save me!" Right. So these are individual mind movies, and when Sharapnin wrote it, he didn't give it a title. He called it a bagatelle, a piece of little importance. Now I'm going to give you another one, and this one does have a title, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want you to give it your own title.
Okay, titles for this. One word, two words, you know? Think of a title. What's this about? If you want to tell a story, too, that's well t as, just as well. Come on, be brave. Sunlight through the trees. Sorry? Sunlight. Sunlight through the trees. Okay, anyone else? Another title? I'll be rhyming, but um, drapes in the breeze. What drapes in the breeze. Okay, longing, yeah, moving, moving beyond the walls of home. Anybody else? Yes. Okay, a letter car carrier delivering mail along a slightly hilly route. Anybody else over there? There's got to be an idea floating up there. I see it all up there. It's just no one saying anything. Yes. Blind. Blind. Okay. Okay. Now the title of this piece. Oddly enough, it's called Moonlight. <laughs> I, I kid you not, and it is by Gabriel Fauré. He has another title, and it's called Simply Minuet, which is a type of dance. But this is Moonlight. But you didn't know that. But the question is, who is right? Who is right? So may I say that? In this age when all of our senses demand to be constantly engaged and when information about just about anything is a click away, could it be that we have lost the innocence of the clean slate that provides us with the freedom to create? In our search for specifics, be more specific, are we robbing ourselves of the serendipity of discovery. I remember asking, me, uh, asking my wonderful teacher before my comprehensive exams, uh, what do I need to, should I, what do I need to brush up on? What do I need to study? What do I need to know? And she was a very old style lady, very elegant, Madam Koldovsky. And she said, oh, just everything, dear, just everything. And so perhaps maybe we can conceive of ambiguity as perhaps an open mind. Uh, this has been an experiment, and I would like to invite you to try this now and then uh, with music. And music, not as music or you know, what we call musical wallpaper to be ignored, or, and not music simply as entertainment to amuse. or to, to it, This is actually an exercise to open your minds and open your imaginations emotionally and intellectually. And, you know, just to put it in today's speak, what links present themselves when you, when you uh, hear this music? So anyway, this has been a brief foray into my world in which abstract music or pure music is perhaps the most ambiguous of all the arts. But one thing I find about the ambiguity of my music is that it can provide a gateway into creativity for anyone. It doesn't matter about your background. It doesn't matter about the age. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. It's all yours. There are no wrong answers. So anyway, just um, back to Moonlight, just in closing. Mm -hmm. You know, now that you know that Beethoven wasn't thinking of moonlight when he wrote this. It can be anything you like. But maybe he was looking for da 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 da
Thank you very much.